go. So, Lexi, tell me a little bit about what you're working on. It sounds like you have a lot of exciting things happening. For sure. Um, well, I'm trying to think. I I've a lot, I mean, a lot of it right now is I'm auditioning a lot, um, working on modeling now. I just signed with a or in the kind of in the process, I guess, negotiations, but whatever, um, of signing with a modeling agency. I just did my first uh, cover shoe for a magazine, which I can't really, I don't think I can say which one. Um, and I just got, uh, uh, there's a feature film that's going on that they gave some really, really good feedback on and hopefully working towards being put on a veil for that. So that's a little bit about what I'm working on, stuff like that right now. <laughs> wow, you have a lot going on. How do you balance it all? Um, honestly, I, 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 uh, compartment compartmentalizing is very important for me and kind of you know priorities which um health always first and then um and then I kind of balance that with working um with working and acting and then also doing things that kind of give back like I work with the endometriosis foundation of America so I'm also working on a bunch of fundraisers for that and that helps me stay grounded and connected to 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 me as I go through the entertainment industry and all of that good stuff. Yeah, tell me a little bit about that foundation that you work with. Um, how'd you get involved with that? So when I was younger, starting probably in middle school in seventh grade, I started having really really bad uh, period cramps, and when I went to the doctor. They were kind of like, oh, you know, period cramps probably has, you know, low pa low pain tolerance. And I was like, okay. And then it kind of started getting those cramps when I wasn't on my period. And then it kind of started happening to a point where I'd end up in the hospital and they'd have to give me pain medication, stuff like that. So then we kind of knew something wasn't right. And my mom had endometriosis. So she asked my OBGYN, is it possible that she could have endometriosis? And she was like, no, she's way too young. She's in middle school probably at that point, maybe a freshman in high school. Um, and so we went another year of this weird pain. Um, and then it started really getting pretty, pretty bad. Uh, and there was one night where I had four ovarian cysts rupture, uh, two, yeah, two on each ovary. And right. So when they had seen that, they had seen another cyst, but this cyst wasn't, it wasn't with fluid, it was with tissue. So they were like, okay, let's make sure that that's, you know, um, benign and isn't cancerous. So we went to, so I went down, I believe it was the Boston Women's Hospital. And the doctor there was like, okay, we should go in and take a look at this. When they went in, they saw that um, the they had seen this thing that looked like the size of a golf ball, which was actually, I don't know if it was my small intestine or my large intestine had been wrapped up by the endometrial tissue because it's kind of like a glue and had pinched off my intestine and it had healed itself, but it was obviously still causing me a lot of pain. So they removed that. And then through that, they kind of saw that I had a bunch of endometriosis and I wrote a blog post and the endometriosis foundation saw it and they invited me to the blossom ball. And when I went there, I heard all of these women's really, really inspiring stories, kind of what they've been through. And I was like, I have to be involved in this because on average, it takes a woman four to six years to be diagnosed, which is way too long. So I wanted to make sure I could make a difference in that. Oh, absolutely. And it's so yeah. common now, but too many doctors, like you said, they blow it off. They're like, oh, you're a woman, you're this, you're that. Right, exactly. And that's not right, especially if you have a male doctor. Girl, yeah. it's awful. It's it awful. is, it is. But yeah. luckily, you know, we have people like you that are advocating for us. <laughs> and I appreciate that so much. I'm finding out if I have it too, so. Oh my gosh, yeah. I I apologize if you do. It's no fun, but um, there, there are a lot of ways to kind of cope with it and, and try and minimize the pain as much as you can, but definitely not fun. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely not. Especially those ovarian cysts. Oy. Oh my gosh. I was, 
I was like, I'm dying. I was like, my appendix has ruptured. I was like, I don't know what's going on, but I think I'm dying. <laughs> yeah, that's how I felt too. It was just crazy. Awful. Uh, Absolutely awful. Gosh, and what advice would you give to women that are in this situation where they're being blown up by their doctor so they can't find the help that they need? That's so funny. I get asked that question a lot. And I, I always say that, you know, your body more than anybody else, including my mom's a doctor. She will say the same thing. You know, your body better than your doctor knows your body. And if you know that there's something wrong, there is something wrong. And, um, you just, you have to be so assertive about that. It's unfortunately, especially when you are a woman, because sometimes, you know, women are emotional, women feel, you know, whatever. Some of those stereotypes, unfortunately, some doctors do still carry. And I don't classify myself as, you know, an extreme feminist or anything like that, but I also have been there to see that stuff, you know? So I, my advice is to be extremely assertive, um, go in there knowing that you want to get to the bottom of what's happening. And what I always say to my doctors, when I feel like I'm not being taken seriously, as I say, I don't want to treat the symptoms. I want to find out what's wrong because there's a big difference because if we just continue to treat the symptoms, I'm going to be like this for the rest of my life. And I don't want that. You know what I mean? And when you say that, I think doctors hear you okay, she's not interested in medication. She's not interested in attention. She's not interested in getting help or, you know, whatever. She's interested in really figuring out what's wrong. And I think that can be really helpful, a more effective type of communication, if that makes sense. You're the first person to say that. And next time I go to the doctor, that's what I'm going to say, because I <laughs> have a good uh, main doctor, but I've had others that are just don't listen. So right. yeah, yeah all been there you've been there I've been there it's just now I know to say treat I don't want to treat the symptoms I want to find out what's wrong right yeah exactly and it's honestly it's my it's my favorite thing to say because that when I even when I was in the hospital last week um that did have to do with my reproductive organs and that's what I said to them and you know and I think my boyfriend was right there too and he was like yeah because they just kept treating the symptoms and I'm like I don't I don't want I don't want more pain medication. I don't want more IVs. I don't want any of that. I want to know what is wrong, what's going on. You know what I mean? And and then we figured out what was going on. So <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you were able to figure it out. I was really worried about you. Yeah, no worries at all. No worries. It's honestly, I think that's in my book, it's a victory for anyone to figure out what's wrong as opposed to treating the symptoms for me so I'm like I came out there with out of there winning <laughs> you sure did and you're a hero for us women with the way you're advocating all this uh, goes this but for women in general who no matter what you have you know you're you're being you're such a hero to us thank you yeah I know I I'm trying <laughs> yeah. And one thing I like asking people at interview is tell me a fun fact about yourself. A fun fact about myself. I love Oreos, but I don't like chocolate and I don't like the white stuffing in the middle. <laughs> so you just like the cookie part. I just like the cookie part. Yeah. And, but I don't like chocolate. So that kind of people are like, wait, what? You don't like chocolate, but you like just the cookie part of the Oreo. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I wish I would just sell just the cookies or just have the cream separate, like you put it as a frosting. Me too. Yeah, they have those like little snack things where they just have the frosting. And I don't know, it's just not the same. I'm like, I need to have the cookie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, I do wish that too. I wish they had like the, the circular cookies and the stuffing separated. That would be perfect. Junk Russo used to have. Say again? almost like the junkaroos remember those cookies you said yes them? yes just like those exactly gosh I love it then you give the frosting to whoever likes the frosting part exactly no my um we had uh he I call I call him my brother he was our foreign exchange student for a really long time and then came back and kept visiting us for you know every six months so I just call my brother but that's what we both loved Oreos growing up like that's all we ate um, and I remember I'd always be like, Hey, Nick, do you want my, you know, the white stuffing, my Oreos? And like, I would literally just stack all of the white stuffing and I'd give it to him and he'd eat all of it. And then he'd 
he would like take the white stuffing off the Oreos and then he'd eat that and he'd give me the the cookie part. <laughs> that is so, the perfect thing. Yeah, it worked out very well. <laughs> That's great. That's great. And it's good to have a brother like that. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah, no, we, we definitely had our own way of doing things. Like people would go into our pantry and see the Oreo cookie boxes, like the stuffing on one side and the cookies on one side. And they'd be like, what is going on? We're like, don't worry about it. <laughs> you guys have a separate one for guests and then have your own that nobody knows about. Exactly. We should have done that. We should have like hit ours so people wouldn't think we're like psychopaths for doing that. But... I think you're ingenious for doing that, but is that if you psychopaths? Just kidding. I know. Exactly. Exactly. What's <laughs> your TV site? What are you watching on TV these days? Right now, I'm watching Big Sky and uh, Manifest. So that those are my those are the two. And then I'm also watching Breaking Bad with my boyfriend, but I only watch that with him. But the other two I watch, you know, when I'm uh, on my own time, because I can't, I guess another fun fact about me is I can't actually eat without like watching some sort of TV or I don't know why it's very weird. But like, so when I'm eating, I'll watch those two TV shows. <laughs> I do the same thing I do that too that's how I catch up on everything yeah exactly because I'm like otherwise when do you have the time you know <laughs> you don't you don't yeah so what do you think of Breaking Bad so far have you watched it before or is this a rewatch this is my first time I honestly I think we both the way we started it was we were both like oh so many people watch this show like we should watch this show so we kind of we we started it and so far it's really good we're still in season one because those episodes are like super long um so we usually watch one before we go to bed at night but the show is on it it's very very good we're we're hooked I think um there's so many different ways it can go so I'm really interested to see where it goes if that makes sense <laughs> I'm not gonna ruin it for you but it's good my brother actually recapped it for my site back when it was first aired Stop. Oh my gosh. Okay. I, okay, good. Now I know I won't watch those recaps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, actually they're not there anymore because when I updated my site and switched servers, a lot of stuff was deleted, including his recaps. I was yeah. so mad. So mad. I was like, okay, three bottles of wine and coffee later and still nothing. No. Oh no. Oh no. Because I was like, all right. You know, and then they're like, well, we could do it for X about him. I'm like, yeah. Are you going to pay for it or is someone else going to pay for this? Right. Oh my gosh. You know, that's horrible. I, my heart would drop. I remember one time I had this, um, I mean, I think we've all had those scares with like interviews or essays or whatever. And I remember I had, I don't know why I did it, but I put my interview questions and then I put like my breakdown of an essay I had the entire thing got deleted and it was long. And this happened to me maybe like two or three weeks ago I was so sad I was like no it's awful but it doesn't compare to, to your story by any means but I I know that feeling of like just having your your heart in your throat and you're like oh my god yeah that's exactly how it was I was just like you know forget it I'm just gonna drink wine and hope for the best exactly that sometimes that's the way to go <laughs> But yeah, you're going to love Breaking Bad. I can't wait for you to watch the rest of it. And you got to keep me posted on what you think, especially the final episode. For sure. Oh, my gosh. I definitely will. We're, we're far from from that, but I definitely we're, we're sticking we're sticking through it because so far it's been it's been really great. And most of the time, first seasons aren't that good. But like the first season was actually really good. Yeah, you have to pay close attention because if you rewatch it, you'll keep picking up things that you missed before really oh my yeah. gosh okay okay I will I'll pay close attention I'm sure I will rewatch it it's one of those shows where I feel like I could so nice well where can we find you on social media so we can keep following you for sure um so on Instagram actually everything's the same so Instagram TikTok Snapchat and I think YouTube as well is all Lexi Stevenson, just the way I spell my name, L-E-X-I-E-S-T-E-V-E-N-S-O-N. And then, yeah, and that's how it is across everything. <laughs> right, we'll send you a follow. Thank you for taking the time. I appreciate you and we'll talk again soon.
Oh, perfect. Of course, it was lovely meeting you and I had so much fun. <laughs> Likewise, we'll talk soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.